there is a French word, tricoteuse, for these supposedly elderly women that sat around knitting in the bleachers during the French Revolution while people were dragged to the guillotine and beheaded, and they would cheer. They would actually go there specifically to watch people who presumably deserved it uh, get their heads cut off. Ostensibly, they were good patriotes. They were good revolutionaries, citizens, who were there to make sure that justice was done. But the implication is that the tricoteurs were sort of sadistic old hags who just liked to see people suffer, and conveniently the, Re the French Revolution gave them plenty of people to watch legitimately suffer. Something of the same uh, character took place when Ariel Castro, the fellow who had those sex slaves in his basement in Cleveland for all those years, um, was paraded in front of the cameras originally. You could see the guard or the policeman behind him looking at him with an expression of extreme malevolence. And you could see that this policeman would just love an excuse to lay right into Mr. Castro, do some pretty awful things to him. Now, a lot of people would applaud. That gentleman is a moral paragon. He's probably a good husband and father. Probably would never dream of harming a woman. Um, maybe he has a teenage daughter that he sort of vicariously sees suffering in that man's basement. Or maybe he just wants to beat somebody up. Maybe he just wants to inflict pain, humiliation, and domination on this human being, and now he's got an appropriate person that society says it's okay to do this to. We've still got tricoteurs in our society, and we've got the tricoteurs in our souls. It's called the scapegoat mechanism. My own bad behavior is somebody else's fault. Or, I'm not a very good person and my morals are suspect, but I'm better than him. So come on, lads. Have at him. He's got it coming. And don't be ashamed if you enjoy yourself a bit while you visit yourself, your just vengeance upon this uh, bad person. That's what I was alluding to in my previous video. We look at the characters in any sort of moral play, any sort of medieval morality play. Who's wearing the white hat and who's wearing the black hat? The black hat is someone whom we can legitimately vilify and harm. That person has it coming, and this is a legitimate target for common humanity's less admirable characteristics.